yes I did. Somebody please tell me who the F I is. I am Nicki Minaj. Yes, the new duck. That cook up. Trouble you. So today I wanted to do something new and make a sort of documentary style video on one of my favorite people to ever walk the Disney path, Miss Waverly Place herself, Selena Gomez. Now Selena got her start on Disney pretty much the same way as everyone else. At age 11, she auditioned for the channel during their nationwide casting search, and Disney liked her so much that they asked her to come back and audition, and then they offered her the lead role in a Lizzie McGuire spinoff titled Stevie Sanchez. But the pilot was never picked up because Hannah Montana was being shopped around at the same time, and Disney decided to go with that show instead. Then Selena auditioned again and landed a guest role on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, where she had a crush on Cole Sprouse, the actor who played Cody, but she had to kiss his twin brother, Dylan Sprouse, the actor who played Zack. But I mean, if they're identical twins, then I guess she got what she wanted? Anyways, Selena went on to land a role in the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody spinoff titled Housebroken, or Arwen. The official title is debated because the show never got picked up due to the 2007 writer's strike, which I will talk more about later. But they did film a pilot, which you can find online. Now, at this point, Selena has been in Disney circulation for a good two to three years, and everyone knew she was incredibly talented. I mean, that girl can act. But she needed her own project that would greatly showcase her talent to the masses. And during this time, Disney wanted to produce a show that built on the success of the network's previous hits. Disney wanted a show focused on a family of wizards, and they hired a man by the name of Todd J. Greenwald to get it done. Greenwald wanted the show set in New York City in order to get away from the beaches and sunshine of California, where many Disney and Nickelodeon shows were set. Disney also brought in Peter Marietta to help Greenwald develop the show, which was then titled The Amazing O'Malley's. Although Marietta was apprehensive about getting involved since he's only ever worked on adult sitcoms and he thought the show would never get past the pilot stage because most potential shows don't, nonetheless, Greenwald and Marietta worked hard on the show and they even rewrote the pilot. And then it was time to cast the pilot. Hundreds of people auditioned for the lead role before Disney executives brought in Selena Gomez. She auditioned, they loved her, and gave her the lead role of Julia. They filmed a pilot episode which was set in a magic shop and also featured rising actor David Henry. The show was then greenlit, and Selena relocated from Texas to Los Angeles in order to film the show. During this time, Gomez guest starred on Hannah Montana in order to build up hype for her own show. She played Hannah's rival, Michaela, which was an excellent marketing strategy in my opinion. I mean, the best way for Disney to create buzz for the newest star is to pit her against Disney's current it girl. And that episode would go on to air in July of 2007. And by then, Selena's show was changed from The Amazing O'Malley's to Wizards of Waverly Place. Instead of having one brother, she had two. Instead of being Espositos, they were Russos. And they were all biracial. All in all, the show has become the magical sitcom that we have all come to know and love. In August, they finished filming season one and were getting ready for the upcoming series debut. Now, this period was a very interesting time because they were standing on the brink of what could be the big break, not just for Selena Gomez, but for everyone involved. Greenwald had previously worked on a pilot for NBC and was a writer on the first season of Hannah Montana, but he's never created a show of his own. If Wizards becomes a success, he gets his big break as well. So do David Henry, Jake T. Austin, Maria Canals Barrera, David DeLuise, Peter Marietta, and the rest of the cast and crew. On October 12th, 2007, it was showtime. Wizards of Waverly Place premiered to 5.9 million viewers, and this high rating is partially due to the premiere of the movie Twitches 2 serving as a lead-in. Disney likes to premiere a new show after a new movie or a new special in order to get more viewers. They do that all the time. But nonetheless, 5.9 million viewers for your first episode is still incredible. In fact, Wizards still has the second highest series debut on Disney ever, only behind the 6.2 million people who watched the series premiere of Shake It Up three years later. People loved how Wizards felt different from many Disney sitcoms. First of all, it wasn't about being famous. So many Disney and Nick shows, especially from that time period, you know, the late 2000s, early 2010s, were about being famous. But Wizards was about heart, family, heritage, and I think that helped it stand out. There also wasn't as much slapstick humor, which is used moderately in most Disney shows, but they completely overdo it in other shows. 
People also love Selena Gomez's portrayal of the rebellious lead character, Alex Russo, praising her comic timing and sarcastic delivery, which is rare on Disney Channel. In November 2007 came the writer's strike. Remember how I said I was going to talk about that later? Well, later is now. The Writers Guild of America went on strike demanding increased funding for the writers in comparison to the profits of the larger studios. With almost all of the professional writers in America on strike, the production was halted on many shows and movies across many networks, including Disney Channel. Luckily, by the time the strike happened, many of Disney's shows, including Hannah Montana and Wizards of Waverly Place, had already finished filming one season and were on a brief hiatus before starting filming the next season. And during this time, most people would want to expand their catalog by working on other projects. But with the Writers Guild of America on strike, what was it then 15-year-old Selena Gomez to do? How about star in a movie filming in Canada? Another Cinderella story was filmed in Vancouver throughout January 2008, and it featured Selena singing and dancing, which was something she almost never did as her primary character, Alex Russo, on Wizards of Waverly Place. Around this time, YouTube became more popular, and many teens would go on to create their own channels and post their own videos, including Selena Gomez and her best friend at the time, Demi Lovato. On January 30th, 2008, a video titled Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez Vlog No. 1 was posted on Demi Lovato's YouTube channel. From there, Selena would continue to make videos with Demi, but also make videos by herself and post them onto her own YouTube channel. In February, the writer's strike ended and cost the economy of Los Angeles $1.5 billion. And now, it was back to work for Selena. She filmed the movie Princess Protection Program from March to April in Puerto Rico, and that movie also stars Demi Lovato. Then in May, Selena began filming season 2 of Wizards, and during this time, people were beginning to hear more music from Selena Gomez other than the Wizards of Waverly Place theme song. She sang a cover of Cruella de Vil for the Disney Mania 6 soundtrack, which was released on May 20th. But the Selena track that seemed to get everyone's attention came from the soundtrack of another Cinderella story. Tell Me Something I Don't Know was released on August 5th, 2008 and became Selena's first ever Billboard chart entry, peaking at number 58 on the Billboard Hot 100. Not bad. Also on August 31st, the last episode of season 1 of Wizards aired. Now, in September, it was the month of premieres for Selena. On the 9th, the music video for Tell Me Something I Don't Know premiered on Total Request Live and that video went on to be Vivo certified in 2014. On the 12th, Season 2 of Wizards premiered, and that's probably the best season of the entire show. Then on the 16th, another Cinderella story was released and went straight to DVD. In October, Selena continued on with her singing and sang Fly to Your Heart for the Tinkerbell soundtrack, which was released on October 14th, which is my birthday, by the way. And although that song would never live up to the success of Tell Me Something I Don't Know, it was clear that Selena was in love with making music. So much so that by the end of 2008, Selena signed a recording contract with Hollywood Records, formed a then unnamed band, and had already begun work on their debut album. Now we move on to 2009, which was an incredible year for Selena. Wizards was becoming increasingly popular, and in order to expand on the show's success, they filmed Wizards of Waverly Place, the movie, from February to March. And Selena got to go back to Puerto Rico for that movie. Then Selena won the Favorite TV Actress Award at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards for her role as Alex Russo on Wizards of Waverly Place. Then in May, Wizards was renewed for a second season. On June 7th, Selena guest starred on Demi Lovato's show, Sunny with a Chance, in order to build up hype for their movie, which was being released later that month. On June 26th, Princess Protection Program premieres to 8.5 million viewers. That same night, a brand new episode of Wizards earned 6 million viewers, beating out the series premiere for the most watched episode of the entire show. Then in July, Wizards was nominated for an Emmy Award. The show began filming its third season, and then on July 17th, a crossover between three of Disney's biggest shows at the time, Wizards of Waverly Place, The Sweet Life on Deck, and Hannah Montana, aired. Wizards on Deck with Hannah Montana earned 9.3 million viewers and became the most watched episode of Wizards and The Sweet Life, but Hannah already had that Jonas Brothers episode from the summer of 07 that would never be dethroned. Now in August, Selena became the youngest UNICEF ambassador at the time, at only age 17. Then on August 4th, a Wizards of Waverly Place soundtrack album was released and it debuted at number 24. 
But other than that, it didn't do much. But Selena's cover of Magic is on there, so I guess it's alright. On August 11th, Selena recorded a song with Demi Lovato, Miley Cyrus, and the Jonas Brothers, titled Send It On, for Disney's Friends for Change campaign. On August 21st, the last episode of Season 2 of Wizards aired. A Wizards of Waverly Place Nintendo DS game was released on the 25th. Then on August 28th, Wizards of Waverly Place the movie premiered to 11.4 million viewers. It's still, to this day, the most watched piece of media from the entire Wizards of Waverly Place franchise, and it's still the second most watched movie in Disney Channel history, only behind High School Musical 2. That same night, Selena Gomez's band, titled Selena Gomez and the Scene, released the video for their debut single, Falling Down, which was available for digital download three days earlier. In September, there was drama. Wizards of Waverly Place, Hannah Montana, and iCarly were all up for the same award at the 2009 Creative Arts Emmy Awards, with the trophy for Outstanding Children's Program ultimately going to the Wizards of Waverly Place. Now, at this point, everyone was well aware that Wizards of Waverly Place was a hit, making it the perfect time for Selena Gomez and the scene to release their first album. On September 21st, Selena began to post a series of videos on her YouTube channel. These videos documented her entire process recording her band's debut album, including signing a recording contract, recording in the studio, taking vocal lessons, auditioning band members, doing photo shoots, filming a music video, and rehearsing a performance. Then on September 29th, Selena Gomez and The Scene released their debut album, Kiss and Tell. It debuted at number 9 on the Billboard 200, and it received mixed reviews. On October 9th, season 3 of Wizards premiered, and like the movie, this new season was filmed in HD while the previous two seasons were filmed in SD. It's also very common for many Disney shows to dip in quality during its third season, but Wizards was now better than ever. And later that month, Selena posted the last video from her documentary series, simply titled Episode 8. In November, Selena Gomez and the Scene embarked on their debut concert tour, Selena Gomez and the Scene, live in concert. Now, by the end of 2009, everyone was well aware that Wizards of Waverly Place had serious power, but they weren't sure if the same goes for Selena Gomez and the Scene's music. Even though they had a single out, an album out, and were on tour, nothing the band has done thus far has surpassed or even matched the success of Tell Me Something I Don't Know. That is, until December 11th, 2009, when Selena Gomez and the Scene released their second single from Kiss and Tell, Naturally. Written by Tim James, Antonina Armato, and Devram Karagulu, this song made everyone fall in love with Selena Gomez and the scene. The song's catchy lyrics and colorful music video helped it peak at number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming the band's and Selena's highest charting song at the time. The band performed the song many times, including at Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest. The song was even used to promote the 2010 fall lineup for the Canadian television network, CTV. Now all of this promotion led to naturally being certified quadruple platinum by the RIAA for selling over 4 million copies in the US. Now in January 2010, Wizards of Waverly Place aired its one hour special, Wizards vs. Werewolves, which drew in a lot of viewers, 6.2 million to be exact, but it also drew in a lot of complaints for its dark and disturbing imagery. In March, Selena finished filming season 3 of Wizards, then she won the Favorite TV Actress Award at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards for the second year in a row. In May, Selena flew to Europe to begin filming the movie Monte Carlo, alongside Leighton Meester and Katie Cassidy. In June, Wizards was renewed for a fourth season and had plans to film a second movie. On June 22nd, Selena Gomez and The Scene released Round and Round, the lead single from their sophomore album, A Year Without Rain. The song peaked at number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming the band's highest charting song at the time. In July, Monte Carlo finished filming, and Selena had her theatrical debut with Ramona and Beezus, and the film did fairly well commercially and critically. Unfortunately, around this time, Selena Gomez lost her voice due to pushing herself too hard with her music. In an interview with George Lopez on July 26, Selena had to use a voice box in order to communicate. Fortunately, Selena's voice came back in time for the release of her clothing line, Dream Out Loud, on July 31st. Then in August, Wizards began filming its fourth and final season, and the franchise won another Emmy Award, this time for Wizards of Waverly Place, the movie. 
On September 3rd, in order to further promote the band, Selena Gomez and the Scene debuted a new web series on Selena Gomez's YouTube channel. Girl Meets World follows Selena as she goes on tour, gives interviews, does photo shoots, and connects with fans despite the language barriers. On September 7th, the titular single from the band's second album was released. A Year Without Rain became one of the most critically acclaimed songs from the band, with many stating that it represented artistic growth. The accompanying album was released later that month and it debuted at number 4, which reflected the band's growing popularity. In October, the season 3 finale of Wizards aired and the last episode of Girl Meets World was released. Then, Selena Gomez and The Scene had wrapped up their first tour and embarked on their second tour, the A Year Without Rain tour. In November, Selena Gomez sang the theme song for the brand new Disney show, Shake It Up. Then, Season 4 of Wizards premiered, and a second Nintendo DS game based on the series was released. And I just so happened to buy that game back in the day. I loved it. Now, by the end of 2010, many of Selena's peers were leaving Disney in order to pursue more mature projects. Miley left, Demi left, Jonas left, the Sprouses left, and it seemed like Selena was the last person from that generation of Disney stars still working on the channel. And although many of her friends were gone, Selena had one special guy to keep her company, Justin Bieber. The couple officially confirmed their relationship in February 2011 at the Vanity Fair Oscars party. Now, Selena had a couple of boyfriends in the past, including Nick Jonas and David Henry, which was weird because David played Selena's brother on Wizards. But the relationship between Selena and Justin was cute. And then I believe that there's rumors that you'll be on the show Way uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. Is that true or? Um, it, it might happen. Anyways, in March, the anthemic lead single from Selena Gomez and the Scene's third album was released. Who Says peaked at number 21 on the Billboard Hot 100 and became the band's highest charting single. The song was also certified triple platinum by the RIAA for selling over 3 million copies in the US. Selena had also won the Favorite TV Actress Award at the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards for the third year in a row. In May, the A Year Without Rain tour had come to an end. Also, Wizards of Waverly Place had finished filming its final episode and Selena was heartbroken, but she had to move on. At least her, David, and Jake got to keep their characters' wands. So that was, that was good. In June, Selena Gomez and The Scene released what would become the band's most successful song ever, Love You Like a Love Song. The single was written by Tim James, Antonina Armato, and Adam Schmalholz, and was produced by Devrim Karaglu and Rock Mafia. Love You Like a Love Song was certified quadruple platinum by the RIAA for selling over 4 million copies in the US, and its music video became the fourth and final video from the band to be Vivo certified after Naturally, A Year Without Rain, and Who Says. Later that month, Selena Gomez and the Scene's third album, When the Sun Goes Down, was released and it debuted at number three, becoming the band's highest charting album. In July, Monte Carlo was released in theaters and it did fairly well. The movie had Selena playing two very different roles, and the song Who Says was used to promote the movie. Then, Selena guest starred on the first episode of fellow Disney star Mitchell Musso's new reality show, Prank Stars. The show had Disney stars interact with their biggest fans, but there was always a catch. Sometimes the stars were in disguise, or they had to pretend like something was seriously wrong with them, or the stars put their fans in very uncomfortable social situations, and sometimes it was all three. Anyways, that show only lasted for six episodes. But later that month, Selena Gomez and The Scene embarked on their biggest tour to date, the We Own The Night Tour. In August and September, Selena started posting the We Own The Night series on her YouTube channel. Like her previous two web series, We Own The Night follows Selena Gomez and The Scene as they do sound check, go on tour, perform at award shows, and much more. Then on October 14th, my B-Day, Wizards aired its 101st episode, breaking the record for the most episodes of any Disney sitcom, which was previously held by the 100 episodes of That's So Raven. Then later that night, Selena was a celebrity judge on Shake It Up's Make Your Mark dance competition. In November, Selena appeared as herself in the Muppets movie, hosted the EMAs, and Wizards aired its promo for the final episode. By the end of 2011, it was clear that Selena Gomez had established herself as a star beyond Wizards of Waverly Place. Then on January 6, 2012, the Wizards of Waverly Place finale aired to 9.8 million viewers. 
This became the most watched episode of the entire show and the most watched finale for any Disney show to this day. The next day, Selena announced that Selena Gomez and the scene would be going on hiatus. On January 20th, the band released what would end up being its final single, Hit the Lights, and the song is most notable for featuring Selena Gomez swearing for the first time in her career. In February, the We Own the Night tour had come to an end, and for the next year or so, Selena would seem determined to please both her younger fans and her older fans that are growing up with her. In March, Selena won the Favorite TV Actress Award at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards for her fourth year in a row. In September, she starred in the movie Hotel Transylvania alongside Adam Sandler and Andy Samberg. But Selena also starred in the edgy Spring Breakers film alongside James Franco and Vanessa Hudgens. At the same time, Wizards had won yet another Emmy Award for its fourth and final season. Now, Selena was beginning to miss seeing her show on TV, and they had plans to film a second movie for the show, but that hadn't come into fruition. Fortunately, in October, Selena went back to filming a reunion special for Wizards. This time, she served as an executive producer. The Wizards Return, Alex vs. Alex, was released on March 15, 2013, and received 5.9 million viewers, the same amount of viewers as the series premiere back in 2007. So things kind of seem to be coming full circle, and Alex vs. Alex would end up being the last piece of material from Wizards of Waverly Place to this day. Later that month, Selena won the Favorite TV Actress Award at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards for the fifth and final year in a row. Then in April, Selena Gomez released her debut solo single, Come and Get It. The song peaked at number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100 and became her first ever top 10 hit. And from there, Selena never stopped. She kept releasing music, working on shows, movies, makeup brands, fashion, and so much more. She kept growing as an artist and as a person, and it's all thanks to the incredible platform she got from the Disney Channel. Now this has been a Disney journey. I hope you like this video and feel inspired by Selena's story. Now I'm honestly baffled by the amount of work that Miss Waverly Place did during her time on Disney. Like it was a lot. And I'm sure I might have left a few things out because there was just so much stuff that she did. And if I mentioned every single thing in this video, it would be way too long. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video and I just want to say, it's good to be back.